Hello, my name is Brandon Enright, and this is a video tutorial on how to solve Gelatin Brains 1.2.2. This is a vertex turning to decahedron, um, and it's slightly deeper cut than the denim to decahedron, so it's deep enough cut that these cuts cross the corner instead of going straight to the corner, so it, it creates these, these new corner pieces that are not there on the denim to decahedron. It still has the denim to decahedron edges, it uh, eliminates the centers completely. So this is sort of like the Pyramix crystal style where there's, the cut goes right through the center there. Um, and it creates these, these new triangle wedge pieces and there's three of them underneath each corner. This is, um, this is a pretty straightforward puzzle. Um, it, I guess it's a little bit deceptive at first, but I still think it's a very good starter puzzle because there's, there's basically three types of pieces. There's these edges, and you can solve them like a donut to decahedron. There's these corners. And there, and there are these little teardrop pieces, um, or uh, triangles, or, or whatever you want to call them. So this is going to be a, a relatively short tutorial. I just want to talk through the, the basic ideas behind how to find commutators on this puzzle. Um, I'll show you a couple, make a suggested solving order, that sort of thing. But in general, I think this is a, a pretty casual video. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not like a strict tutorial. If you want to see a strict tutorial on this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Um, if you take a look at my Star Makes video, I go into a lot more detail about each thing. This puzzle does have an interesting problem, though, um, in that you can have a single corner twisted. And um, unless you use a relatively complicated fix, it's, um, it's kind of annoying and, and it takes a little bit of time to fix, but I'll show you how to do that. So on this puzzle, it's hard to isolate these edge pieces to make a pure sequence for these edge pieces. Plus, since there's 30 of the edge pieces, if you spend a lot of moves trying to isolate an edge piece, um, it'll just it'll just take a long time to solve this puzzle. It won't be very fun, or it'll just be annoying. So, in general, I, I would recommend here's the puzzle scrambled. I would recommend just starting solving the edge pieces. And if you saw how to solve the pyramid crystal video, or if you know how to solve a dendrite decahedron edges. It's a really simple 1 1 commutator. So if you want to cycle this edge, that edge, and that edge, form of 1 1 commutator x, y, x inverse, y inverse. Um, and you can see that that actually, obviously, because of the, of the overlap between the pieces, so, and you can see the overlap there, because of the overlap, it ends up cycling corners and it, it ends up making a mess but when the puzzle scrambled and you're just solving the edges and you're not worrying about anything else it doesn't really matter and so you can you know at first you can place these intuitively as you work your way down to the, the bottom of the puzzle and then towards the end you'll want to fall back on this one one commutator and eventually you're going to run into a case or you, you might run into a case where the orientation of two of these edges is um, inverted you can never have just one, but the orientation of the two of these edges, edges could be inverted. And again, you're going to want to make a, um, an orientation changing commutator. And I showed how to do that on the dynode to decahedron, but I'll, I'll demo it again. So I'm going to take this edge and put it right there. Now I'm going to f take this edge out, flip its orientation, and put it back. And the way orientation flips on this puzzle is you just send a piece around in a circle, and it goes in backwards. So now we can see that the brown does not match the, the rest of the brown. Then I'll undo my my x part. Now I got to undo my y part. Um, should be yeah, I'm undoing it nicely. Um, I think yeah, there we go. Okay, okay. And you can see that I, I flipped this edge and this edge. I broke a few other things, but since we're solving edges first, it doesn't really matter. Um, so that was 14 moves total. It's a a one six commutator. Um, and I th it is probably possible to make that shorter, but I haven't, uh, I haven't experimented with it very much. So that's how you solve edges. And then at that point, when you solve edges, there's only two pieces left on this puzzle. Um, and so since the shortest commutators are 1-1 one, one commutators, we should just look for a 1-1 one, one commutator. So that's one option. Um, so that was two edges that are opposite each other um, across the pentagon. Um, and so you turn them in, and then you, so watch. So x in, then y in, then x out, then y out, and it creates that pattern. But you, can, you have other options too. So you could go x in, y out, x out, y in, and it creates that pattern instead. But it, it's still it's a three cycle, and the reason it's a three cycle um, is just because that's all the overlap. 
But you can also look for like two pieces, two of them that are adjacent to each other. We already saw that. That doesn't help us for the corners or for these pieces. It does the edges. Um, and then I, there are there's a one one commutator that involves pieces that are n not. Oh well, I, that is still a. Yeah, so they're still um, they're still on the same face, and there's no way to do an edge. There's no way to rotate around a corner that's not on the same face and still make a one one commutator, right? Yeah, there's no way. Okay, so uh, that's basically the only one one commutator that we have available to us. So those two uh, faces. So we get to pick. Do we want to solve the corners that way, or do we want to solve the triangle pieces that way? Now, there are sixty triangle pieces, and there's only what, 20 corners? So it would be preferable to solve the triangle pieces that way because it's only four moves. And since there's fewer, um, there's more triangle pieces, fewer moves, more, you know, it, it's usually a win. Um, the issue with doing that is that you're going to, you could end up with a single corner twisted. So essentially, two thirds of the time, you'll end up with a single corner twisted, um, which is sort of an annoying thing. So let's see. If we wanted to solve the, the the triangles this way, then we'd have to come up with a pure commutator for the corners. So we know that the only option is to, you know, if we're going to build a pure commutator off of a, a three one, so a, a three conjugate sequence like that, um, then we have to isolate the the corners in some way. So that corner is like almost isolated. Um, so let's see if we can. No, we can't really can't really touch that corner without also cycling an edge. So what about this corner? Um, no, because that that's that breaks that right there. I don't I don't think it's gonna work. So let's yeah, it didn't work, right? So we just created another. We just created a less efficient corner and a triangle three cycle. Okay, so what are our other options? So what was the problem with that commutator? We turned that in, turned that in, turned that out, and it. We, that's not that corner is not available to us. So what if we made that corner instead? So the way we do that is instead of turning that corner down in, we turn that corner in. Okay, we do the exact same thing with the y that we were doing, and then that out. So we just instead of using that piece, we use that piece for the commutator, for the start of the commutator. Now that corner is nice and isolated for us. So we've isolated that corner, and we have two options available to us: that corner and that corner for options. Um, and it, so it doesn't really matter one way or the other, which one you use. We'll just try that one. And then we undo our our uh, x part. and Oh, wrong way. And then we undo our y part. And there we go. So now we have a pure 3 cycle of the corners. It's, it's 8 moves. It's a 3-1 um, commutator sequence. So 3 is the conjugate, and then the 1 is the y part of it to construct a commutator. OK. Um, so that's 3-1 for the corners. So we could solve these triangle pieces. 1-1. And then we could solve the corners, 3, 1. And that would get us, that would get us solved. So we already know how to solve the, the edges 1, 1. So what if we wanted to avoid the corner problem? We wanted to solve the corners before we solve these pieces. So now we have to figure out how to isolate one of these pieces instead. Oh, you know what? Before I talk about that, we have to talk about how to orient a corner. Um, and so we have, I guess, two options here. So we can orient, if we're solving the corners first, um, and we don't have to worry about these triangle pieces, then we could orient the corner non pure. So I'm going to move uh, that corner to that corner spot. Now I'm going to take this corner out, change its orientation, take it out. Uh, let me take it out right there, change its orientation, put it back in, undo, undo. And we just changed the orientation of that corner and that corner. And it made a three cycle of these triangles while we're doing it. So notice that this corner's orientation is correct. That corner's orientation is uh, turned clockwise. And so that one must be counterclockwise. Um, so that would be good if we're solving the corners first. Then we, we could change the orientation of two corners, no problem. We wouldn't have to worry about breaking these, uh, these triangle pieces. Um, but we were discussing doing the triangle pieces 1-1 one, one, and, and the corners 3-1. So we need to find a corner orientation sequence um, if we want to solve the corners last that, that solves the corners pure. So let's do the same thing again. Put that corner right there. Now we need to take this corner out 
change its orientation or put it back, and we have to do so without affecting that piece. So let's see. Let's take the corner out. Okay. We know if we change its orientation, we're going to affect that piece. But the corner is like basically isolated for us. So we can take it out there, rotate it, put it back. So that was a 3-1 sequence. So let me show it to you again. Okay. Here it is. One, one, one. So it's, it's a three-move conjugate sequence, not a 3-1. I'm sorry. Okay, now we put it back, and we undo. Now we have to undo our Y part. There we go. And we just uh, twisted two corners pure. So that was a one, five sequence. Let me show it to you again. Here's the one move. Now there's a five part. Here's the setup move for the five. Okay, so now we're one move into the five. Now here's the three, one, two, three. Now we undo the move for the five. So now we've done five moves. Now we undo our one part. Our one part's the X part, our five is the Y part. Now we have to undo our, uh, our Y part. And so here's the setup move. Then we have to undo the, the conjugate. So, and then undo our setup move. And there we go. So that's a pure sequence for the corners. So other than having a single corner twisted, you could solve this puzzle that way. What would it take to solve these triangle pieces pure instead? So we already know that like basically the only like useful three one or three sequence for us is that. So let's let's do. So instead of trying to cycle this corner, we need to move that piece. Okay. So before we could just take this corner and we hadn't have to affect that piece. So what if we just do this? Just put a you know save save the corner right there. Now move that piece. Now bring the corner back. So that's a three sequence. Okay. Now we need to undo our X part. Okay. And now we need to undo our Y part. And I'm doing this visually. And there we go. So now we have a pure three cycle. It's three, three. So it's three moves of X, three moves of Y. Um, and so that's three, 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 three. So 12 moves total. And it does a pure three cycle of these triangle pieces. And I think there are, there are other options available to us, too. So we don't have to look at it as a 3-3. We can actually convert it to a 5-1 really trivial, trivially. So um, the thing was is we moved that there and then that there, right? And then we put it back, and it was in the way. So what we need to do is we need to move that there. That's our setup move for the, the, three, the 3 part. So that's our setup move for the 3. Here is our 3. Now we need to undo the setup move. Now look, this is nice and isolated, and, we, and it's, it's isolated in one move. So we have options. We can put the blue there or the pink there. So um, let's do the blue that, this time. Okay. Now we need to redo our setup move because we're undoing our initial five moves now. So we redo the setup move, and then we undo our three moves, and then we undo our setup move, and then we undo our Y part. And so there we go. We took a 3-3 sequence and we converted it into a 5-1 sequence. It's still 12 moves. It's just a slightly different way to look at the whole, the whole problem. We just moved a, a setup move around from the Y part to the X part. Okay. So that's 12 moves. So we could do 12 moves times 60 pieces. Well, you'd probably solve more than one at a time, but there'd be setup moves involved and that sort of thing. So um, 12 moves times 60 pieces or 8 moves. Oh, I did it wrong. Eight moves for 20 pieces. Personally, I think eight moves for 20 pieces, when you can do four moves for 60 pieces, is a lot better than four moves for 20 pieces and 12 moves for 60 pieces. So I think that the right solving order is solve the edges with 1-1 one, one commutators. and Well, intuition and then 1-1 one, one commutators when you get towards the end. And then solve the triangle pieces with 1-1 one, one commutators. And then solve the corner pieces with, I keep on doing that wrong. Solve the corner pieces with 3-1 commutators, which I'm going to show one last time there. OK, so that would solve the puzzle except for a single corner twisted. So how can a single corner be twisted on this puzzle? Um, the reason is, is that when you twist a corner, you're not preserving twist. So you did not put a twist in these three corners, or, 
around the, the piece that you twisted. But you did put a twist in that corner. And you can resolve all of the other pieces on this puzzle without resolving the twist in that corner. And the reason you can do that is because we put a three cycle in the corners. One, two, three corners. Three cycle. And we already saw that we can undo that three cycle with using a three cycle. So it, it's an even permutation. And then we did a three cycle of the edges. And we already know that you can do a three cycle of the edges. And so how many three cycles did we do in these point pieces? Well, here's one three cycle, these three pieces. And then here's another three cycle, this piece to that piece to that piece. And here's another three cycle, this piece to this piece to this piece. So there's one, two, three, three cycles in these triangle pieces, one three cycle in the corner pieces, and one three cycle in the edge pieces. And because all of these three cycles are all even permutations and we already know how to do three cycles in this puzzle, we can fix all of this crap without twisting that corner. So we twisted the corner like that and did all those three cycles. But we could undo all those three cycles without twisting that corner, and that would leave us with a single corner twisted on this puzzle. So how do you resolve a single corner twisted on the puzzle? Well, imagine that it's twisted and so that yellow is on that side. Well, you would just twist it so the yellow matches up, and then you would resolve all these problems. You would have to resolve all these problems with commutators instead of just twisting it back. And that would take care of the total twist of the puzzle. So here's the issue with doing that. You fix the, the parity, or the permutation parity, or the, or the orientation parity, whatever you want to call it, the, the excess orientation in the corners. You fix it with a twist. That broke the edges. And you did the edges in the very beginning of the solve. So you're going to have to figure out how to fix these edges without doing very much damage. And then you broke the, the triangle pieces, so you're going to have to fix the triangle pieces without, well, it doesn't matter, without you know, breaking too many of the corners. And then you have to fix all the corners. And, and that, would, that would resolve this. It would be kind of a pain in the butt. But there's this, um, there's this conjugate sequence. So move up, move over, move down. That conjugate sequence combined with an excess twist and applied twice. That conjugate sequence did a twist in that corner. It did not put any three cycle in any of these edges, so we no longer have to solve these edges. It only created a single three cycle, I believe. This blue, pink, red, a single three cycle. And oh no, there's more to that. There's, there's also, um, yeah, so there's, it's, it's only a couple three cycles. It's not as many. Um, and it's not so bad in, in these triangle pieces. And then it did a one, two, three. Four? No, what did it do? Okay, it just twisted this corner. It didn't actually move it, so it did a three cycle of the corners. So that's actually preferable. So let me show that to you again. Up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over. Eight moves. It's the same twist sequence that I showed on the dinododecahedron. It puts an excess twist or takes an excess twist away in this corner. Um, so you, the inverse is really straightforward. You just do over, up, over, down, over, up, over, down. That's the inverse. And it did the twist in the opposite direction. It did the same amount of damage everywhere else. And you can resolve this, and you don't have to worry about the edges because they're all already solved. It didn't do as much mess. You can resolve this relatively quickly doing that parity fix. There is a much, much, much more complicated way to apply the same concept of that sequence um, that involves you know, turning that face and that face and like. I don't remember, like that face. It, it's really complicated. It's 24 moves instead of 8. Um, and it twists that corner up here. But I'm only advocating doing things that are easy to understand on these puzzles. If, if there's just some magical sequence that you copy and paste and, and you pop into the program or you just follow the steps and it works, then there's not really any satisfaction in that, in my opinion. So I highly recommend that if you run into a single corner twist on this puzzle, you do this. And I've done it so many times that it's just like finger memory. I don't even have to think about it. Um, OK, so let's recap. Uh, you solve the edges, 1-1 one, one commutators. Well, intuitive at first, and then 1-1 one, one commutators towards the end. You change the edges orientation. I'm not going to bother to show that. But you take that piece, turn it around a circle, and then undo, undo the circle um, to change the orientation. Then you solve these triangle pieces with 1-1 one, one commutators. And there are lots of options available to you there. So. There's another option available to you. Um, 
and then you solve the corners with 3, 1 commutators. And then if you, you can change the orientation of the corners if you need to. Um, so you, you can use setup modes, right? So if you want to change the orientation of that one right there, okay. So that's a setup move to help you get the orientation right when it, and so we just change the, the twist of one of them. So you can make sure that you place at least one of the corners correct every single time you cycle these things by just using a setup move, and you can use a setup move, you know, some combination of setup moves on each one of these corners. But when you need to twist two corners sort of independently of everything else, um, this was the sequence, so you take that corner and you put it there. Actually, you know what, let me show you something just totally different off the cuff. So let's uh, take that corner and put it there. Now we've got to take this out, so I'm going to take it out that way. Now change its orientation, put it back, put it back. Um, and I, like I said, I'm just doing this completely off the cuff here. Um, we got to think about this. Okay. And then put it back, and we just change two orientations. Um, so what happens if we want to change the orientation of this corner and, say, like the one opposite it? So I think the one opposite it, according to the other side, is the light green. Well, whatever. I, I think you get you understand that all I would do is just, you know, let's take that one and do a couple setup moves and put it, we would put it there. Yeah, and then we could twist those two, and then we could undo the setup moves, and so on and so forth. And then, of course, to resolve a, a twist to the corner, um, do this sequence. And it'll put an excess twist, and then you just resolve the damage. And, and it sort of minimizes the damage. You, you can get the damage more minimal with or to zero with some really complicated setups, but uh, that's not really important. So I think that that should be everything you need and hopefully a lot more understanding than you actually need to solve this puzzle. So go ahead and solve this puzzle. It's a pretty fun puzzle to solve. Um, if you've never solved a, you know, a more complicated vertex turning dodecahedron than say like the diner dodecahedron, I think you'll get a lot of satisfaction out of solving this puzzle. It's, it's pretty fun. And, um, and to be honest, I think a lot of people, when they first tried to tackle this puzzle, they thought it was kind of hard. And so when they solved it, it, it felt like a really good achievement. So I hope, you, I hope you get to have that feeling too. Good luck.